Jay Dilla, born James DeWitt Yancey on February 7, 1974. He was raised on the east side of Detroit, Michigan in the Conant Gardens neighborhood. Music would come natural to him as his mother Maureen was an opera and classical music singer and his father Beverly was a jazz bassist and vocalist. As a baby, Dilla would only go to sleep if his parents played jazz music while in his nursery. His mother recalls him spinning records as early as two years old. As he grew older, he learned how to play several instruments, starting with piano and cello, before moving on to drums, flute, and guitar. In order to keep him busy and out of the streets, when Dilla wasn't at home with his mother, she had him in church, where he sang in a youth choir and assisted with communion. He was also a cub and a boy scout. Dilla graduated from Farwell Middle School and attended Davis Aerospace Technical High School. The school prepared students for a career in aviation, but Dilla wanted to do music. He would meet a guy named Amp Fiddler, who stayed within walking distance from his home. Amp was an established keyboardist, producer, and songwriter who was best known for his work with George Clinton. Amp opened his doors to the youth in the community who were interested in music. This is when Dilla, who was going by the name JD, would be introduced to the Akai MPC-60 drum machine. He taught Dilla how to use the machine and from that point on, Dilla was at his house almost every day. For his senior year, Dilla transferred to Pershing High School in a predominantly black middle class district. Here he met rappers R.L. Altman, better known as T3, and Titus Glover, better known as Ba Ten. Bonding over freestyle battles, they quickly became fans of each other. They would form the group Scene Pod, which was dopeness spelled backwards. The group consisted of Dilla, Ba Ten, T3, Ba Ten's friend Wajib, and Dilla's cousin QD as a dancer. However, the group would break out before releasing any music. The remaining members, Dilla, T3, and Botten, then became the group known as Slum Village. With Amp's hospitality, they recorded a demo. While on a Lollapalooza tour with George Clinton, Amp would meet Q-Tip, a member of a tribe called Quest. He insisted that Q-Tip meet Jay Dilla on their stop in Detroit. When they got to Detroit, Dilla got his chance to meet Q-Tip and would give him a copy of the Slum Village demo himself. Q-Tip was immediately impressed with what he heard and felt compelled to help Dilla share his gift with the world. Q-Tip reached out to Dilla giving him part in a production collective known as the Uma, which consisted of Q-Tip, Jay Dilla, and Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Dilla would go on to produce for Janet Jackson, De La Soul, Busta Rhymes, Common, Erica Badu, The Roots, and more, all while still handling production for Slum Village. After the release of the Slum Village albums Fantastic 1 and 2, Dilla left the group to pursue a solo career. Although he left the group, he was still involved in the production on the future Slum Village projects. He released his first solo album, Welcome to Detroit, on February 27, 2001. His second solo album, Rough Draft, was released early 2003. Prior to its release, Dilla would go on tour in Europe. Upon his return to the States, he became sick. A trip to the hospital revealed that he had a rare blood disease called TTP. His production slowed down, but Dilla was so tied to the music, he continued to work. In spring 2004, he relocated to Los Angeles, California. His health began to worsen up until the point he was hospitalized and eventually diagnosed with lupus. His mother had made the move to Los Angeles as well, wanting to be closer to her son. Being confined to a hospital bed still couldn't stop Dilla from producing. He would send his mom out to pick up records and she also massaged his fingers to help him with the pain while using his MPC. During a period of improvement in his health, Dilla decided he wanted to go on one last tour. He would return to Europe once again, this time performing in a wheelchair too weak to walk. After he returned to the States, he finished up working on his third solo album Donuts, released on February 7, 2006. 29 out of the 31 tracks he created from his hospital bed. Just three days later, on February 10, 2006, Dilla would succumb to his illness. He was 32 years old. Although his life was short, he is considered one of the most influential producers in hip hop. His unique style of sampling and the way he made the NPC sound like live drums revolutionized the game. Posthumously, he has released several albums, including The Shining, J Stay Paid, Champion Sound with producer Mad Lib, a reissue of Rough Draft, and more. Rest in peace, Jay Dilla. Thank you.